Hey everyone, my name is Manuel Del Valle. I am the writer, director, and, and co-producer of El Triste. El Triste, even though it's a story that we made with the puppets and marionettes, it's a story that is just truly universal. And it it's a story that I think a lot of people can relate to. It's a story of not, is the, the question or the fear of not being good enough. Uh, this is something that within the entertainment industry, and of course, a lot of different atmospheres and, and industries, but particularly in my experience within the entertainment industry, has been a little bit of a burden, but at the same time has been a motivator to improve myself and try to be better, you know? And this film kind of touches on the topic of deliberating through that you're never going to be good enough because there's not, uh, there's no limitation on how good you can be. And at the same time, sometimes you're just good at some stuff and you may not be some good at other stuff. And it's just, it's a film that invites people to to accept while you thrive to be better, accept the fact that there's not gonna be like a final uh, finish line, you know? Uh, I knew that I wanted to tell the story within that context, uh, talking a little bit about uh, self-esteem and, and, and the artistic ego as well. Uh, but I also knew that uh, I'm very much intrigued by, by puppeteering because I feel like it's a craft that it's kind of like live action, but animation at the same time, and it's a craft that it has a whole world once you're in there, but from outside you see it's so small, you know? And I feel like that's how we perceive ourselves sometimes or how we perceive our artistic interests. We we feel like, like for us, this project that I'm doing is that my whole world and from outsiders is, is just, oh, the short that my friend is making, you know? And, uh, or the feature film that my friend is making. And I feel like that's, I don't know that I was just really inspired with the idea of of going small and going with the puppets, even though we're also seeing the humans with behind the puppets. Um, yeah, it was it was truly an exceptional uh, endeavor that we took. Uh, I came across this story or this idea, particularly because I saw a documentary by a good friend of mine called Life on a String. Uh, where I, I knew a little bit about about the puppeteering world and that really sparked my interest. Um, and from there, I just I just started meeting puppeteers and I started to fall in love with their medium and what they do and how they do it. And and, and the magnitude of, of their, their world, but at the same time, how small it is, you know? So that's where it, it all began, yeah. It really felt like going back to school 101, film school, because all the cinematic techniques that you tend to learn about visual storytelling, we had to apply them here uh, in a sense that we are going back to silent film, for example, uh, where the, the, the visuals tell us everything, you know? And from there, the collaboration really sparked the, the fact that we had to go strictly into storyboarding the hell out of this and knowing exactly what we needed and what type of camera movement we wanted to tell certain emotions, that really sparked my interest on understanding how blocking was gonna go, you know? Because you, you tend to imagine blocking with the humans or with actors and then you, you, suddenly you're like, no, but I need to be on the ground. You know, how is the camera going to move it in, in contrast with, with the puppets? And also the fact that we have puppeteers feet on the background. That's something that we did not hide, the, the, the puppeteers feet, you know? And uh, we were very concerned about that. How are we going to direct the puppets and also the puppeteers on how they move behind the puppets, you know? Um, Cain Carias, Matt Scott, Alex Griffin, he's He's 
right now he's collaborating with uh, Jim Henson's daughter uh, on, on, on a lot of puppeteering projects. He really served as a good help on how to understand how, how puppet films are shot. And uh, I mean, the craft behind uh, El Triste himself that is just it's it's a it's it's a piece of plastic, you know, and the craft behind Matt Scott's puppets, which are the all the other puppets that appear, was just magical. The the most fascinating thing about this film was going into into casting, you know. <laughs> we literally had a casting session. Uh Matt has hundreds of puppets hanging on. Like I went to his apartment to read the script out loud and to try to talk about the film. And when I get there. I enter the, the house, which is a very eccentric, peculiar house because, I mean, Matt is that, you know, I really admire him. He's a great guy. But you enter into his apartment and he has hundreds of puppets hanging on, on the ceiling. And then I was like, okay, let's bring them up. Let's do a casting session, you know? And I knew that I wanted certain personalities for the story, but I was also allowing the puppets to inform how the script changed, you know? I mean, I could talk for hours of what the collaboration process was, but those are the things that I take the most with me. Finding personalities within judgment, to be honest, because uh, in this film, you got a you gotta cast by look, you know? Uh, and because the personality is something that you bring up into the film. And, and of course, this is something that we clearly wanted to be a, a fully diverse film. Because we had a whole diversity of puppets, you know, and uh, in a way we we had to find the angry looking one, the 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 funny looking one, the and and but also give them another another spin. For El Triste, for example, if you look at El Triste on social media, he has this gangster type of personality because he has a ton of followers, you know. Uh, he's kind of like a. a like a sad clown that drinks alcohol all day and smokes cigars, you know? And that's something that is, that's not the personality of El Triste in the film, you know? So we did take some liberties to to change the personalities of the characters themselves, but we tried to stay, to stay true to what the author, Cain and Matt, the authors of the puppets, uh, were trying to depict, yeah? I truly feel like the puppets, uh, once we were storyboarding, for some reason, we were kind of counting with uh, their physicality, the way they, they move. We we knew because we had done a, maybe one rehearsal to understand how the puppeteers move the puppets, but also we overestimated the amount, the amount of emotion that we could tell in a close-up, for example. You know, uh, because in the storyboards, we had the tendency to make the eyes a little bit sadder or make the, 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 the smile a little bit longer, you know, Some, even though we knew that we that that's not the way it was going to happen, because it, maybe they don't have that much of fa facial expressions that we can control. So that really triggered for us in the moment to put an intention in a lot of the camera movements. Um, I mean, by all means, this, this film was shot in like two days. So it, like we had a limited time to like perfect certain camera movements and all of that, that we may have wished to like go further into, into getting the focus perfect and all of that. But we we put more of the intentionality over the the perfection of the the the, the shot. You know what I'm saying? And we what we did is that we were when we were shooting, we were trying to experiment a little bit more with camera movement, uh, tilt pans, jibs, all of that to try to make sure that the camera compensates for that little moment of excitement that we got when we were storyboarding we're like oh put this model a little bit more broad you know and and, and then we're instead and we're like we can't we we can't control his smile you know so that's we we compensated with uh with amazing uh dp olivia gastaldo they is an amazing amazing cinematographer so they and, and me we were constantly 
trying to figure out how to make it work and uh, within a small time frame, you know, and and uh, yeah, so that was very exciting. Juan Carlos is a master at what he does. Uh, Juan Carlos and, and I now have collaborated for two times. Uh, we just got a short into Morelia that he was a composer for. And of course he did uh, the music for El Triste. Music for El Triste is mostly original. We have a couple of, of classic songs that he reinterpreted, but it's mostly original music. The main question though, this was the, the, the thing that was very exciting for me. There was two things. Sorry that I'm stepping out of the music after, just for a second, but there was two things. Number one, I was obsessed with the idea to, of making it work without hiding the puppeteer's feet. I was, that was something that people were like, no, you got to hide them because then the background. And I was like, no, I'm going to make it work, you know? And the other thing is I got a lot of advice to put actual verbal uh, words to the puppets when they sang. Like they told me, no, maybe compose, uh, write a song with actual words. And I was like, no, I just want them to humble, to do uh, hum, you know, like la, 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 la. And that was... I was very much afraid when we when we did that. We we got an amazing uh, Brian Swartz. He's an amazing uh, trumpetist, and he was also the voice of of all of the characters that are there. You know, he voiced all of the characters, and the way he was humming, just to get the personalities of each one. When I was in the studio, I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work out. You know, but once Enrique, uh, no. Uh, Juan Carlos, sorry, I sometimes call him Enrique because his last name is Enriquez. Uh, when, when Juan Carlos uh, makes uh, the actual music for it before the shoot, because of course we needed to like play the characters to the music. I I remember when I played the song for the first time in the car and I was like, I love this. The, 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 main, the main piece for El Triste, it's a song that I listen to uh, sometimes once in a while, just I mean, it sounds like, oh, I'm listening to my own work, you know, or Juan Carlos, but no, it's just a song that really calms me down and reminds me of a time where I, pre-COVID, when I was making great art with my friends, you know, and it's it's just a, a song that got stuck with me, you know, I could sing it along, uh, but he, he I, I feel like the, that Juan Carlos, he has done an amazing job with, with everything that he's doing right now, he's growing even more and more and more and, and working with big talent and emerging talent and he's just all over the place in a good sense like he's working with all types of talent so that, that was very fun and also the fact that we we had to put music everywhere because there's no dialogue and the intention had to be within the forgetting a, like putting aside the original songs that are the, the songs that the characters play the score itself it was a constant communication with Juan Carlos and uh, constant references. And we just talked to me about music and I learned so much about music collaborating with him. So yeah, that, that was a, an interesting process. Uh, I recently just did a music video, which in a way is a silent film because like there's lyrics, but it's fully narrative. And I, I think that I just, I fell in love with the idea of telling stories just with the visuals. So in a way, I replicated that in the music video, you know, so it's uh, that 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 speaks the fact that I really love the process of working with him. One, I'm stubborn and I was like, I got to make it work. No, 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 no. And like, I'm joking, but yes. Uh, but the main intention was I I love the idea of of like entering a smaller world within a, a normal world. The idea of when you look at the film on a bigger scope, like from outside, you could be like, none of this really happened. Like it's just guys moving the puppets. But when you enter closer, you see that there's a whole story within the puppets, but but the puppeteers are still there, you know? So I, I really like the idea of like world build, subtle world building in a way because it's subtle because even though there's like a whole uh, relationship of puppets and, and characters moving around, I could argue that it's just a bunch of people moving puppets, you know? And I feel like that's that speaks to the magic of, of film for me. It's like 
uh, we believe in these close circular worlds, in, encapsulated worlds that are a creation from something that is absolutely not real because it's, it's, it's an, I mean, the emotions are real and the, the creative process is real, but we, we, we can enter into a world that if you look at it from a bigger scope, it's just like, it's not there, you know? And, uh, and I really like that about, about, uh, doing the whole like seeing seeing from far away that the puppets within the, the sorry i feel like i'm rambling um but yeah that's that's basically it that was very exciting for me and also i mean we had a bunch of interpretation of of, of what seeing the fit meant it was kind of like okay uh the fit i mean we we came to a couple of conclusions like it's destinies it it kind of interprets uh, our will you know because our will moves us and, and our intention, intentionality or our drive for fame, success, money, uh, love drives us. And for for us, at, at some moment, we, we talked about that, meaning that, but at the end of the day, we decided just to, to not say it out loud, even though I'm doing it right now, and just let the audience uh, try to interpret it and, and just enjoy the film. It was a film that really came out of uh, 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 a joy to explore something that I've never done before. Uh, because even though I love world building and I love fantasy and, and magical realism and, and production design and custom design, all of that is really intriguing for me. Uh, puppets is like, I've never done that, you know? And uh, and I, I mean, I was in film school at the time that I made it. So I was like, now is the time to try things out, you know? I have been actually thinking hard about this. Uh, right now, I'm in the process of trying to adapt uh, the essence of what this short is. It's, it's, it's different. It focuses a lot more on the puppeteers and not necessarily the puppets, but it has some surreal aspects of what we, we've seen with El Triste. And I'm actually working on a, on a, on a TV show. I'm, I'm trying to push this as a TV show that uh, speaks about uh, these amazing, unique, uh, art field uh, industry that I that I absolutely adore, and but it also talks in general about self esteem in the entertainment industry. It talks about trying to make it, and it 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 it's kind of like a hug to all artists that are trying to make it, you know. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm in a very early, you know, putting a yes together type of process, but but yeah, I'm hoping to turn this into something bigger one day. I've seen this firsthand. I mean, I moved to LA um, four years ago, maybe almost five years ago, and I've seen people skyrocket into uh, positions of 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 power. And I don't mean power in a way that like, oh, I, I need the power, but that they can open doors for other creatives that are underrepresented or are trying to make it, you know? And I've seen that firsthand with friends of mine that are now are absolutely killing it, you know, that I share these programs with, you know. Uh, I, this is not my first time in this program. And when I got notification that I was going to be here, I was so excited because I remember the first time that I did it. It was at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, and I was like, dude, I worked really hard to put, to go through film school. And then my life is over. I'm here, stuck at home, back home. And I was like, I made this short that at the time I had made Nahum, which was part of of the competition a couple of years ago here. And I was like, I made that for nothing. Nobody's going to see it. And then this type of programs come and they give you a voice and they open up for you. Everything related with Nalip is helping so much these, these, these new artists. So I can say it firsthand, it has opened doors for me. I've seen people skyrocket into great positions of, of, of creative power within the industry because of these programs, you know? And uh, it feels unreachable when you see it on a web page and you're like, yeah, I'm not going to enter into these type of things. But once you start digging into this medium of, of, of networking and opportunities within exhibition of, of, of work of fellow artists, 
you get inspired and you meet people. And once you start entering into this cycle, you see that it's, it's opening doors for people and is is not just choosing their friends to enter into the programs. It is truly something that that you start seeing how that person that I shared the film festival with four years ago now is in this program. And uh, this guy that just moved into Los Angeles a couple of months ago, now he's sharing a program with me, with New Filmmakers LA. And I'm like, you just got here. And that means that he's really opening doors for people that are trying to make it, you know? So I've seen it firsthand, like I said, plenty of times. And uh, I love it. I, I love it and I, I'm, I'm happy to experience it. And I hope to be a part of this movement uh, in the near future when I'm in a position that I can help. With.